K-I-L-R Taylor Games Hello and welcome gamers, simmers, and pilots. I am the Killer Gamer and we are doing our world tour. And we are here in Illinois at Clow International with Flight Simulator 2002. Which, ironically, um is beginning to look more and more like Flight Simulator 10. <laughs> you start to see similarities with uh, Flight Simulator 2000, but then definitely Flight Simulator 2002, it's like, oh, this is beginning to start looking like it because you got the ATC and, and stuff. So it's almost like <clears throat> with Flight Simulator 2002, after that, they add a little bit more and a little bit more. <laughs> And prepared seems to be doing the same thing. It's like a little bit more, a little bit more. But it doesn't seem there's like nothing revolutionary happening, it seems like. Except for maybe the 64 bit thing. But I don't know. It's a, as far as revolutionary simulators, I mean, X Plane, it just. It's like a night and day difference. But um, I know I know people have their. Their. Um, their feelings about. FSX and, and X-Plane. I like them both, so... I like them both for different reasons. Alright, so... We are going to be going to... Uh, Lansing. Lansing Airport. So let's go ahead and bring up the map, and I'll show you... what we are talking about here. <clears throat> Alright, so according to the Commodore 64... <laughs> this is where we're at. And this is where we're going. And that is all there is to it. Are we going to set nav radios? Why? <laughs> I've been... I did that on the old simulators. I don't see any need to do it on this one. We got a GPS and all that other stuff, so... Yeah, I think I think we'll be good. All right. It's always a fun time trying to get this thing started. Ugh. All right. Turn on fuel flow. Bring the throttle in. We can hear the engines kind of wind up there a little bit. Let's try to start it. There. I just keep clicking on it until it's like, whoa. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Well, that was, uh, fascinating. Hang on here. I'm going to be fixing one of my, uh, yeah, there we go. Let's see if this actually works. No, that doesn't seem to... I'm trying to get it to where if I push my brake button, it will stay pressed. Like, you know, pressing down an actual brake pedal. Instead of it just kind of like, brake, and then stop. Brake, then stop. 
Uh, let's see. And you can't see what it is that I'm doing because it doesn't it doesn't pull up the menu commands or the windows. You can't see it for some odd reason. It doesn't doesn't let you. Oh, that's breaks apply release. Well, no wonder it does that. Well, isn't there something where I can apply both brakes? There's apply left brakes and there's apply right brakes. But there's not... Can I... I'm not going to be able to do the same button on both, am I? Ooh, 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 ooh. I know what I could do. I don't care about the knee board. I got trigger buttons. I can use that. Decrease auto brake control. Increase master battery switch. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Well. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll we'll get something different here. Let's turn on our radios here. All right, we're gonna go to runway three six. Um, I've got a flight plan, but I'm not gonna load it up because there was not an option to start off at a parking spot. So. It was like one end of the runway or the other, and with Flight Simulator 2002, it will move you whether you like it or not. Wait a minute, am I going in the right direction? Yes. Okay. Now, does anyone know, um, looking at these graphics, all right, playing FSX, maybe as much as you have, do these trees look the same to you? Do they look like the same old tree? They look like the same old trees. Now with my FSX, I, I did a I did a complete overhaul with it. It cost it money. <laughs> but I did an overhaul with it. Using Orbix. Um, so now I've got better looking trees. I got better looking to uh ground. It's like it's almost like a whole new simulator. It's it's the kind of overhaul that Microsoft should have done. It's the kind of overhaul that Lockheed Martin should do with prepared, you know. But then again, they're not really doing this. And I've and I read this. They're not really doing a simulator, right? It's mainly, it's mainly a platform. Well, I guess it's a, I guess it's a simulator, but it's not meant to be a flight simulator. It's more like a combat simulator, or you know, more like a situation simulator from at least from what I understand that's what I read but all right let's load up our flight plan load load up flight plan we are going to cloud to cloud Lansing and this should take us to Runway 36. All right. See, so see how that just kind of well, almost put us right in the same spot. All right. So I didn't turn on my taxi lights, but we're gonna turn on our. Oops, not the not the pitted heat. Oh, huh, glad I saw that. Of 
simple air traffic control here. Chicago departure, Cessna, November 700, Mike Sierra, IFR to Kilo, India, Gulf, Quebec, ready to cut. Cessna, November 700, Mike Sierra, is clear to Kilo, India, Gulf, Quebec, report is filed, climb and maintain 3000, departure frequency is 119.35, squat 6066, clearance void 30 minutes from now. I wonder if it actually keeps track of that. day. Straight out. Depart north. We're going to do depart north. Traffic. Cessna. November 700. Mike Sierra. Taking off. Runway 36. North. Departure. Alright. Let's kind of make this a little smaller here. Get the autopilot set. That should do it. All right, let's get going. Well, we got must have some winds because this thing is trying to blow me off. <laughs> Not quite that, in that sense. Ooh, flying over the trees. So we're going to be uh, landing. We're going to be running. <laughs> we're going to be landing on runway 27. Oh, man. That means we're going to have to fly over the airport, turn around, and come back. That's annoying. Now, for those of you who have, may not have watched <coughs> some of the other legs of this flight um, and wondering why I wasn't flying in the, in the virtual mode to start off with, um, keep in mind that, yes, you can fly in this mode, and it's smooth, it's good. Oh, hey, this is good, good seats. Um, you cannot completely control the aircraft from here. 
So the um, the buttons, you if you click, you you can't do anything. It doesn't change them. Doesn't do anything. See, I can't turn it off. I can't do nothing. I can't can't click this. Can't click this. So all you can do is just fly. These instruments work. You can't adjust them. Like this here, you, you can't adjust your heading, heading bug at all. But you can at least fly. So, you know, I'll, I'll kind of, you know, look around. So I'm going to have to go back to this then. Zero, nine, five. It's November almost one, one, as if you know the feeling that I get is between Flight Simulator 2000 and 2004. It's kind of like Windows XP, Vista, and Seven. <clears throat> Vista was an incomplete operating system. Seven is what Vista was supposed to be. 2002, it's. It's a great simulator, but 2004 was like nearly perfect. I mean, it was just when it came out because I didn't play. I didn't have 2002 when it came out. That was one that I missed, yeah. but I got 2000, 2004 when it came out. And, oh man, it was just like it was. It was just like every everything, you, almost everything you could possibly want in a simulator, um, like. Since growing up, since the six, Commodore 64, you know, it was just like, this is great. Um, but it's like the virtual cockpit. It, it worked, all the buttons and everything pretty much worked on it. So it's, it's kind of like they were working on it, but they released half of their product in 2002. So they just made some updates, and they're like, "Well, we don't have it. We don't have it complete yet. So we'll release it halfway out on 2002, and then as we're finishing everything up, then we'll do 2004." I guess in some ways that's not too bad. Um, well, I mean, it's kind of like you're playing a, a beta, you know. Like maybe 2002 was more like a like a, a beta beta game. Why are we talking to approach? So, you know, it wasn't, it's not the full game, you know, but um, it gave people a chance to kind of play around with the new features before. I mean, think about like. Um, Usually, some games usually take like maybe four years for them to come out. So, I don't know. There's 95, 98, there's three years there. 98, 2000, it's two years. So, I don't know. Just, it was just a thought that came to my mind.
It's always nice to have a, you know, outside view of us flying. Now, do you think if someone was making a video saying, yep, playing, playing 2004, playing Flight Simulator 2, do you think this would easily pass for Flight Simulator 2004? I think it would. So, oh, we're just enjoying our little flight here. And then they'll have me turn back the other direction. <sighs> you know, I'm hoping that as we're flying, um, like the weather and stuff, like we'll actually get to some nasty weather, like, uh, like heavy-duty thunderstorms and stuff. I did come across some rain with uh, Flight Simulator 2000. I don't see them, do you? I don't see them. I don't see them anywhere. They're supposed to be off in this direction? Town Chicago's that way. Oh, pretty soon. Uh oh. 
Chicago. Is that the airport? Roger. Current altimeter 293 Contact Chicago departure on 133.1. No. I think that's how. I'm not sure what airport that is, actually. KGYY. It was not in the other simulators. Maybe 2000, but... Of course, we were flying... A more direct approach. Oh. I don't know. What did you say? Okay. <laughs> I didn't realize you were talking to me. <laughs> Probably should pay attention, huh? It's like another airport over there or something. Oh, let's uh, zoom out here on our little radar. Okay, well, looks like our airport is kind of behind us. Which means this airport is definitely not on our map. These are all newer airports. Oh, you can't see because of my, my head. this here. Alright, so here's our the airport that we're going to. So it looks like ATC is they're moving us this way or now they're going to turn us around the other way. I remember the water. It doesn't really look too bad. In case you're wondering, we won't always be flying a Cessna. We'll be flying some other planes too. Um, but I know I've done a worldwide flight completely in a Cessna before. I don't know, do you think I should do a worldwide flight in just a Cessna? In the Flight Simulator 2000 series, I'm doing a Beach Baron. Boy, I have some challenging times with that one because that one's going... It goes so fast that I'm like coming in for a landing and I'm like... BOOM! <laughs> and then I realize they have speed brakes. But they're not air brakes, though. They're not air brakes. They're speed brakes, so... It does slow me down in the air. I've noticed that, but it's... I, I finally just... With some practice, I finally was able to get some control over that beach baron. Which 
Where are you taking me? They're going to take us out in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> sure, why not? Take me into a squiggly line. Whoops. I mean, look. Look, look at the yellow line. They got me in a squiggly line. Well, look at this. We're going south. And we're taking 270, so... That's the one thing I like about the default. It, it, it always directs me where I need to go. It may not direct you smoothly, but it does actually vector you around to where you need to go. And other ATC programs have not been so smooth. Sometimes they start off that way, and then sometimes they, they vector you off in a direction, and then they never talk to you again. It's like, see ya! <laughs> Go that direction! Bye! <laughs> Gee, thanks, ATC. You have to do what I say. out there I don't see them all right I'm just gonna say I do well we're 12 miles away from the airport What does BRG stand for? 269, what is that? That's not our heading. It changes though. 270, it was 269. Maybe that's telling us that's the direct you know what I think this is telling us you need to go this direction to get to your okay 
I think that's what it is. Bearing. That's what it stands for. Bearing. Nine miles, bearing 273. Got it. Question is No, that's not it. Okay. That's a different one. That's the one. I see the red and white light, so we're... Looks like we're on a right angle of uh, descent here. That's what these are. So if you see a red and a white light, that means you're on the right angle descent. If you see two whites, that means you're too high. If you see two reds, that means you're too low. It's kind of weird how that works, but... It's just that thing, you know, where things look different depending upon the, the angle that you're at. We got a good speed. 80 knots? That's not bad. Freaking Bixby? I never talked to you! Stop! No! Shut, shut up! Well, now my phone is doing all kinds of weird stuff. where I think my phone is spying on me. Okay, we're too high. See, it went went double white there. So we'll we'll, we'll reduce our throttle. There we go. Bring our throttle back up. Yeah, that might have been too much. Control your altitude with your throttle. Control your speed with your pitch. That's what I remember. Because if you think about it, 
If you want to increase speed, well, you obviously don't want to point your nose down to increase your speed. And you do on something kind of like this, but usually you go full throttle to do that. But yeah, when you're coming into a landing, when you want to speed uh, slow down, you, you're going to want to pitch up a little bit. But you want to be careful too, so you don't stall. Oh, you know what? This is much better than trying to do it the other way. kind of a rough landing there but I've definitely had worse Okay. Ah. Turn our, our parking brake here. Radio's off. All right. So we're here at Lansing, Lansing Airport. I appreciate you uh, joining me on this uh, flight and uh, we will continue with our world tour I know it doesn't seem like we're moving about uh, very far but the reason why we're doing this little hopping around to these little airports is because on the Commodore 64 there was very little coverage in the Chicago area so um, I'm not hitting every single airport I'm just hitting certain ones um, and so that's the re and if you looked at the map um, let me go back to that so the map here 
this is why so this is pretty much let's zoom out here hate when it does that okay so this is the extent of the map um, and my flights when I was very very young I would always start off here at Miracy Megs and Meigs and uh, sometimes I'd fly to O'Hare or I'd stop at Midway and then I would fly all the way to Greater Kankakee uh, that seemed to be like my Midway point and then I would drive drive <laughs> I would fly um, all the way to here to University of uh, Illinois uh, Willard and then um, I just come back the other direction or hit some of these airports and yeah so that's why we're kind of going around in this area a little bit um, but we will be heading down south and hitting uh, greater Kankakee and uh, I don't think we're gonna worry too much about these Bloomington normal I wouldn't mind hitting this one this will be a good flight from Greater Kankakee over here to Bloomington and then from Bloomington over here to University. So expect expect a flight like this. Um, but yeah. So if you're wondering why we have short little hops like that, that's that's why. But once we get out of this map it's going to be spread out a little bit more. No, we're not going to be flying from like Illinois to like Texas, like in one go. Because I don't want to make like a video that's like five hours long or something like that. Um, but anyhow, um, appreciate you joining me. Be sure to check out the other videos to see what they look like in the other simulators. And uh, stay tuned to this channel. And uh, they'll be well, be more flights. This is going to be, you know, a fun series. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while, or at least get back to, um, especially with these old, old simulators. So it's just memories. <laughs> All right. Thanks. We'll see you next time. If you thought this flight was interesting, then you might want to check it out on these other flight simulators that you see on your screen. It's just a fun way to relive old memories and see how things changed over the years. Be sure to subscribe to be notified of any new videos, and I'll see you on the next flight.